Hi, I'm Lisa. In this video, I will give you some tips for understanding native speakers. Do you get frustrated that you still don't understand native speakers, even though you consider yourself fluent in English? One of the most common questions that my students ask is, Lisa, why do I understand you, but I don't understand other native speakers? You think your English is pretty good, but then when you listen to native speakers, it may sound like they're speaking another language. That can be so frustrating. I will give you some tips that will help you understand native speakers more easily. Why are English teachers easier to understand? There are several reasons. Experienced language teachers are always thinking about the needs and the skill levels of their students. They tend to speak more slowly and more clearly. Additionally, teachers use vocabulary that is appropriate to the student's English level. For example, when I'm teaching an advanced English class, I may use more advanced vocabulary and I may use more expressions than when I'm teaching intermediate students. But the reality is most native speakers don't speak the way English teachers do and you need to understand other native speakers. So let me give you my tips. My first tip is listen to thought groups instead of individual words. What are thought groups? Thought groups are words that naturally belong together as a grammatical unit. Let's look at this sentence. What are you talking about? Five words. But when we say the sentence, it sounds like one word. All the words are connected. There is no break between them. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? We stress talking because that's the key word, but all of the other words are spoken very quickly. Let's prolong the ah, uh, the vowel sound in talking. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You don't need to understand all of the little words. In English, the key words are stressed. These words are called content words. They're generally the words that hold the most meaning and they're generally nouns and verbs. The other little words around the content words are called function words. They are prepositions, pronouns, articles, and conjunctions, and sometimes adjectives. Function words don't carry much meaning. So when you're listening to native speakers, pay attention to the content words. You don't need to understand all of the little words. Pay attention to word stress and to connected speech. Remember, native speakers speak in thought groups. Let's look at this sentence. I don't know what he's talking about. Eight words, two thought groups. Because it's a short sentence, you can say it in one breath. I don't know what he's talking about. We're going to stress no and talking. I don't know what he's talking about. Oh, ah, no talking. I don't know what he's talking about. We don't stress I or he is or about. Let's look at a few more sentences. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. We didn't say I don't. We say I don't. I don't understand it. And we stress the final syllable of understand. That a ah is going to be bigger. I don't understand it. Have you heard about it? Have you heard about it? We stress heard. That's a verb. That's the word that carries the most meaning. Have you heard about it? When you're listening to native speakers, pay attention to that pattern. That will help you understand them. Let's look at a sentence in the conditional tense. If you hadn't told me, I wouldn't have known about it. We have two thought groups, and because the sentence is a little bit longer, we can pause. So we say the first part in one breath as one word. We don't pause. If you hadn't told me, if you hadn't told me. And then we say, I wouldn't have known about it. I wouldn't have known about it. Let's say that again. If you hadn't told me, I wouldn't have known about it. We stress told and known. Those are the main words we hear. The rest of the words are spoken very quickly. It's normal that you don't hear the other words clearly. It doesn't mean that your listening skills are not good. The other words are simply swallowed. They're spoken very quickly. Let's say that again. If you hadn't told me, I wouldn't have known about it. I recommend that you keep practicing this way. Okay, let's go on to my next tip. 
My next tip is don't try to understand everybody. It's a very advanced skill to be able to understand all different types of native speakers. If you try to do that, you might feel discouraged about your English level. Be aware of who you're listening to. Different types of people speak differently. They use different expressions, different slang, and often different generations speak differently. So ask yourself, who would you like to understand? What would be the most beneficial to you? Is it something work-related? Choose to listen to the type of person that you would like to understand. And then don't get discouraged if you can't understand every native speaker. Some people are easier to understand than others. Let me give you an example from my life. Many of you already know that I used to be a French teacher. I have a credential to teach high school French in the United States. At one time in my life, I was obsessed with speaking French well. I still practice it from time to time. I listen to different French speakers online. And sometimes I feel really good about my ability to understand native speakers of French. And other times I get discouraged and I think, wow, Lisa, you're not as advanced as you thought. For example, when I listen to the president of France, President Macron, I feel that my French level is very good. Au moment où les populations de tous nos pays font face avec courage, nous n'avons pas le droit de nous diviser. He speaks very clearly. But then, when I listen to a popular French YouTuber, I think, oh my gosh, my French is not that good. What is he talking about? Mec, hier soir, j'ai vu le dernier Twilight, mais c'est un truc de malade, c'est une bombe, ce truc, c'est un putain de chef-d'oeuvre. He's using a lot of slang and a lot of expressions. A president of a country is going to be using different vocabulary, different language than a young YouTuber, right? Stay focused on only one style of speech one age group, or one topic of interest. Then slowly you can expand that and you can start listening to another topic that interests you. So if you would like to work in an English speaking environment, listen to the topics related to your specialty. My next tip is choose one type of English accent to practice listening to. Maybe it's the American accent, maybe it's the British accent or Australian. There are many different accents and there are many regional dialects of English. So it's not realistic to try to understand all of them. And remember, even native speakers sometimes struggle to understand other native speakers. And that probably happens in your language too. People in different parts of your country speak differently. So when someone visits your city from another part of the country, you immediately know that they're not from your area, right? Maybe their melody is different, or they speak more quickly, or they pronounce certain words differently. So you should not expect yourself to be able to understand all native speakers of English. If you would like to focus on American English, you will probably be learning the standard American accent. It's the accent spoken by the majority of Americans. It's also sometimes known as general American accent. It's not typically associated with any particular region of the country. It's also called a neutral accent. It's the most common one you will hear in the United States. My next tip is you must keep learning English expressions and idioms. The main difference between the English of a native speaker and a non-native speaker is that even the most advanced non-native speakers generally use a lot fewer expressions. That's also the easiest way to recognize a non-native speaker's writing. For example, if I'm reading a comment online, I can often recognize whether it's written by a non-native speaker or by a native speaker. The non-native speaker uses a lot fewer expressions. For example, a non-native speaker might say, there is intense competition in that industry. But a native speaker might say, there is cutthroat competition in that industry. What is cutthroat? You understand the word cut and you understand the word throat. But if cutthroat doesn't make sense in a sentence, that means it's probably an expression. And cutthroat means very intense, very aggressive. When you're listening to native speakers, you will hear a lot of words that don't make sense. You understand the meaning of the words, 
but they don't make sense in the sentence. That means it's probably an expression. The more expressions you know, the better you will be able to understand the conversations of native speakers. Let's look at these two words, cold turkey. Do you know what that means? You know the meaning of both of those words. You know the meaning of a cold and you know the meaning of turkey. But what is cold turkey? Let's listen to how some native speakers use cold turkey. Brit, you have got to go cold turkey. No texts, no Facebook postings. Cold turkey 48 hours. So I decided that I would just go cold turkey. What are they talking about? She said, I decided that I would just go cold turkey. That has to be an idiom because it doesn't make any sense. If you hear something like that and it doesn't make sense, you must look up the meaning. That's a really important tip. Find out the meaning. Always keep expanding your knowledge of expressions. Let's look it up in Google. To go cold turkey. It means to stop doing or using something abruptly and completely. Most commonly said of drug, alcohol, or tobacco use, it can also refer to any bad habit. And then let's look at some sample sentences. I tried quitting smoking for several years using nicotine patches, gums, and even hypnotherapy. Eventually, I just had to go cold turkey and rely on my own willpower. I was eating way too much junk food and was gaining a lot of weight as a result. Finally, I just went cold turkey and stopped buying anything but healthy food. Now you understand what those people were talking about. Let's look at a few more words that don't make sense, so it must be an expression. Let's look at the expression, hold your horses. Let's listen to the way some people used it. All right, now this side, hold your horses, hold your horses. But I said, wait a minute, whoa, 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 hold your horses. You know what hold means and you know what horses means. But what is hold your horses? Let's find out the meaning from Google. Hold your horses means wait a moment. Used to tell someone to stop and consider carefully their decision or opinion about something. And now let's read the sample sentence. Just hold your horses, Bill. Let's think about this for a moment. You must keep doing this every time you hear somebody say something that doesn't make sense. You understand the individual words, but when they say the sentence, you have no idea what they're talking about. They're probably using an idiomatic expression. So first, you find out the meaning. Second, you find some sample sentences online. And third, and this is very important, make your own sample sentences. That way, you're much more likely to remember the expression and use it next time you're speaking English. My next tip is listen more than once. Listen to the same material many times. The first time you listen, it'll be difficult for you to understand, but each time you listen to it, you will be able to understand more. And the new expressions will stay in your mind. You'll be able to memorize them and your confidence will grow. My next tip is listen to topics you enjoy. Listen to something that you're excited about, something that you're naturally curious about. Studies have shown that when students are interested in something, they will learn more quickly and they will remember the information better. This is because when you're more passionate about something, you're more likely to be focused and to be motivated to learn it. You want to find out as much as you can about the subject. So you will naturally want to look up the new expressions and the new words. So if you would like to improve your listening skills quickly, find a topic that you're really passionate about. My next tip is use something that contains both an audio and a text. For example, you can find a TV script online and then when you watch the TV show, you can follow, paying attention to how they're pronouncing things. Or if you're listening to an audio book, get the actual physical book as well. Buy both versions and then listen to one part of it, maybe three or four minutes, and listen to that same part over and over again. I recommend that you first listen with the text and then listen again without the text. And then check yourself. Ask yourself, how much did I understand without seeing the text? 
Then listen to the same text a few days later and you'll be surprised you'll be able to understand a lot more. And you will start to notice patterns of word stress and word reduction and so on. And my final tip is be patient. If you don't always understand native speakers, don't get discouraged. Apply these techniques that I gave you and I promise you that you will get results. Keep practicing and you will be surprised at how much your listening skills improve. And don't forget to have fun in the process. Thanks for watching and keep practicing your English. To get the two courses, the American Accent Course and the 400 Advanced Words You Must Know for Fluent English, go to accurateenglish.com.